Welcome to another edition of Coffee with Polio Experts. Today we're here with Dr. Usman Giop, who is an expert on environmental surveillance for polio. Today we're going to talk about how environmental surveillance tracks down every last strain of the polio virus. Thanks for being here. Good afternoon, my pleasure. Before we learn about environmental surveillance, could you please explain the traditional surveillance that's used for polio? Okay, since the, the beginning of the program, actually, we were looking about uh, acute flaccid paralysis in children. Because polio as a disease, have one of the major symptoms is acute paralysis for the children. So we have actually several workers, frontline workers, tracking all the children that are paralyzed. And when those children are found, and as, since polio is not the only actually disease giving this symptom, some stool samples are taken from the children and sent to a network of laboratory to see if polio is the cause of the disease or not, the paralysis. So as of today, 99% of the samples came negative, but for one person, we do find indeed white polio as a cause of paralysis of those children. So what is environmental surveillance and why has that been added to this traditional form of surveillance? Yes, now that we are really close to eradication, there is really few paralytic cases caused by polio. However, if you look at the, the disease, the polio, when people are infected, they all excrete the virus in the environment through the feces. So by trying to uh, have sample from the sewage system, we are in fact surveying a population of children rather than actually trying to spot one paralytic, uh, par paralyzed children. So that is why environmental surveillance add in terms of sensitivity to be able to detect the area where polio virus is circulating without causing a disease. How do you decide which sites to test? Oh, we are quite strategic doing that because we first actually try to select the countries where polio is a problem, of course, and we do retrospective analysis to see where the case of polio used to appear or where we know that the surveillance of acute paralysis, paralysis is not very good. So then we come up actually to select these uh, sites to add sensitivity of what we are doing. And then uh, this will help actually look about, let's say, asymptomatic infection by polioviruses in the population. So could you walk us through the steps of environmental surveillance once you choose a site? Yes, when a country is chosen and a province within the country and a district within the country where we think that environmental surveillance can add value, there is, as we used to do in the polio pol program, everything starts with uh, training. So we go on the field first, actually, and uh, work with the local uh, health workers to explain to them actually what environmental surveillance means. Then actually we train them on how to select the good sites within the area that was selected. And this includes we can use some sophisticated technology like satellite imagery to see actually where the, the watershed, where indeed, for example, in poor resource countries where there is no structured network of sewage, we do have open drains and then we can see where the uh, water flow and select those sites actually to look about polio virus in the environment. And what happens if you detect polio? If we detect the polio, meaning that the, the first the sewage sample is collected by the health workers in the front line and they have to have personal protective equipment of course. And this sample has to be sent, like stool sample from child, it has to be sent in the cold chain to the laboratories where indeed the sewage sample, meaning one liter, is concentrated, put on two cells, and then we can see indeed if we have poliovirus or not. If we have poliovirus, we do the characterization of the virus, and the genetic of those virus can tell us a lot. For example, it can tell us where the virus comes from, what are the closest virus that are linked to this virus, and this can help fine tune and orient the response from the program, meaning immunizing the kids before they get paralyzed by the virus. So what is the future of environmental surveillance then? 
Well, we have a lot to do. I guess that we have a strategic plan from 2013 to 2019 because we do think that environmental surveillance will last long after even AFP surveillance and after polio eradication because this is a useful tool that can be used also to look about other pathogen. All the enteric pathogen can be actually found in a sewage sample, for example, rotavirus, uh, you know, causing uh, gastroenteritis in children, etc. And also, even now, we are working also with other people that are interested to look about some bacteria and look about antimicrobial resistance. So the future of environmental surveillance, actually, I think that it will provide um, it will provide uh, important clues to other public health program other than polio after we eradicate polio, of course. That's great. Well, thank you for your time and thank you for your expertise. You're welcome. Thank My you pleasure. for watching. Thank you.